Today, I'm gonna give you a short introduction to Bayesian statistics. Or really, diet Bayesian. No math involved whatsoever. Really, this is just an introduction to the idea of Bayesian. Now remember, in my last video I said we are trying to estimate something about the population, something unknown. Like the future value of something that hasn't actually happened. For example, the probability I will hit three or more stoplights on my way to work. Or the probability that my productivity score will be between 60 and 70% tomorrow. Or maybe we're trying to figure out the current value of something that is unobtainable. Like the probability the next dude you meet on the internet is a creep. Or the probability the medication the treatment group takes is going to reduce symptoms by 10% or more. How in the f do you estimate these things? Well, there are really two philosophies on how you estimate a population. One is the frequentist or the likelihoodists. There's minor differences between the two. These come from the famous statisticians Naaman and Pearson as well as Fisher. Although quite frankly, Fisher would be pissed if he knew that I was lumping him in with Naaman and Pearson. Those guys like hated each other. And on the other hand, we have the Bayesians, named after the great statistician, Sir Eugene Ulysses Hawthorne Ulysses Bayes II. Just kidding, his name was just Thomas Bayes. But the other name sounded so cool. What do these two philosophies say about estimating the population? And again, in this context, population means a value we're trying to obtain that is in the future or otherwise unobtainable. So Bayesians admit that you really can't know the future. The future is always changing. It's always unobtainable. And the minute you're just about there, it might move and change. Instead, what we do is we take what we currently know about the population and use that to inform our estimate of what the population is. You don't know how many stoplights you're gonna hit on the way to work? Well, what's your best guess of what it might be? That's what Bayesians care about. And this belief is what we call a prior. Meaning, it's what we believe prior to performing our actual study. Our prior is our best guess of what the population looks like before we even gather data. So then we go out, we gather some data. So on your way to work, you actually count the number of stoplights that you hit. And now the data that we collect is going to adjust our beliefs about what the population looks like. And that updated belief now becomes a new prior, but a prior for another study. So from the Bayesian perspective, estimating the population distribution is an iterative process. One that requires we state our beliefs in concrete terms, collect some data, update our beliefs, and repeat and repeat and repeat. Over time, our estimate of the population gets better and better. So for example, maybe my prior belief is that I will hit four stoplights out of 10, but it could be as low as two and as high as six. So maybe I start collecting data and after a week, this is what the distribution looks like. So it looks like we may have been off a little bit, and that's okay, but we're gonna use that to update our beliefs. And so we might say, well, I don't know, this was kind of a good week as far as stoplights go. So now my belief is modified to incorporate that new information. Maybe now, instead of saying that I think it's four stoplights, I might say, okay, maybe it's three, which is a compromise between what I believed before and what the data are telling me now. And by the way, we call that the posterior. And the posterior is just some aggregation of what we believed before we collected data with the actual data itself. Now let's say we do it again for another week. And here's what the data look like now. Okay, I'm starting to be convinced that maybe my original belief was a little off. So maybe now, my my initial beliefs are playing very little role in what my estimated population is now. Instead, what is playing a much larger role is the actual data that I have collected. Now suppose I do this for two years. That guy's a nerd. After two years of collecting data, you better believe I have a dang good idea of what the population looks like. And maybe it looks like this. But now, let's say they build a hospital on the way to work. Well, snap diggity. My commute just doubled. Now, the population parameters have changed. And that's just fine with Bayesians. They are okay with the population changing. That just means we have to keep collecting data, and that's okay. So let's look at the big picture real quick. Again, we're trying to estimate something about a population, or something that's gonna happen in the future, or is otherwise unobtainable. So we collect a sample, which is gonna be our best guess of what the population looks like. But we know the sample isn't gonna be perfect, and so there's gonna be some uncertainty associated with our predictions and our estimates. And we use the sample to estimate the probability density function in some sort of a way. But now, how do we map on what we know about the sample into what we think about the population? The Bayesians would say the way to do that is that you incorporate your prior beliefs or your prior estimate of what the population looks like and then combine that information with the information you collect from the sample. And then now we can start making inferences about the population. So that is a very quick and dirty, very diet Bayesian explanation. But that's essentially what it is. And next time, I'm gonna be talking about the frequentist or likelihoodist perspective, because it is very different, I tell you what. Until then, peace out.